Welcome back to Triple Overtime. When we say nobody covers more Northern Michigan games, we mean it. Exhibit A, we still have 10 local basketball games on our menu, but if you want all the specials, you'll have to ask your server, Shannon McGratton. Jeff, I hope you're hungry for some dominant Highland girls basketball action because tonight McBain hosts Beale City, sitting one game behind Pine River in its conference standings, making this matchup a must win for the Ramblers. Home team leads 29-10 in the second quarter. Asia Legro, the long ball, she puts her team up 22 points. Two minutes later, Meredith Hamlet steps outside, continuing her team's first half run. Beale City responds, Nicole Gross misses the first shot, but Gets her own rebound. Aggies down 18. BC gets to work on defense. Jordan Snyder puts up the denier. Other end of the court, Natalie Gross banks the final bucket of the half, but Beale City falls 65-33 against McBain. Down the street, McBain NMC tries to continue its three-game win streak. Wildcats start the night of scoring, but nodding this game at three is Melanie Huker. She runs in for her first points of the game. Next bucket comes from Alyssa Whitback. The junior puts her team back on top. End of the first quarter, Mara Van Order grabs the rebound and makes it a three-point game after eight minutes of play. NMC takes control in the second. Brittany Hookwater takes the steal and goes to the rim for two. Comets of Deuce. Then Rebecca Dieterman drops the J. Home team wins 50-39. Same school. Different visitor, Lake City boys invading Comets territory. Boys in white and the first half up two, but Lake City's Lucas Marion hits the turnaround jumper. Game tied at 31. NMC answers with a deep shot. Jonathan Perry takes his time, making the three for a Comets lead. Trojans keep this a close game. Marion tosses in the righty. Lake City down 34-33. 60 seconds later, Perry forces a turnover, finds Cody far down the court for an easy dose. Home team. Starts to break away, but is unable to hold on, losing 64-61. And in other Highland action, Pine River girls remain unbeaten in conference play after topping Manton 80-58-28. For Sports Overtime, I'm Shannon McGratton. Thank you, Shannon. How much ground do we cover? Well, we're just going 132 miles from McBain to Cedarville. No big deal. The state-ranked Trojans hosting Brimley, running clock in the fourth quarter. That doesn't stop Cedarville's Jared Salvador from playing hard. He's going to put up the rock for two. Sweet jumper there. Sweet cross courts pass from RJ Carrick to Ryan Gravel. Gravel lofting in the triple. Trojans still running and gunning late in the game, though. Salvador again going to make the highlight reel, missing but fighting hard to put it back. Trojans win 73 31. Staying in the UP, Rudyard has what St. Ignis wants, second place in the Straits area. Good defense for the start of the game for the Saints. Jeremiah Anderson intercepting the pass, going in for the lane right at us. Then it's time to pass the rock. Ends up in Anderson's hands. He's going to drill the three from the corner. Saints have an early five-point lead. Dogs have Zach Staker, though. He scores a lot of points. Case in point right there with a three. And then he's going to get the inbounds pass on the block. Little problem banking that one in. Austin Trotter going hard to the basket, though, getting the nice bounce around the rim for the deuce. This one was a battle with St. Ignace coming out on top, though, 75-65. Mackinac City and Atlanta boys basketball making their sports overtime debuts this year. Comets 8-1 on the season. Comets playing volleyball underneath the hoop. Ryan Bailey throwing the baseball pass. Ball works on the basketball court. Zach Peters for the lay-in. Atlanta's Levi McFarlane going to use a ball screen, then a little hesitation dribble. Going perfectly in for the scoop. That was my move, the hesitation. Mackinac City's Carson Gold Shoes Hartman toe in the line, knocking down the trivector. Check out the shoes. It's got to be the shoes. Or he's a good shooter. Later, Hartman paying it forward to Cash O'Brien. Cash is straight money from that distance. Vikings cashing in the win, 45-42. Staying in the Northern Lakes, Vanderbilt. Boy, still looking for their first win, hoping to get it at Harbor Lights. Vanderbilt's Nick Straub has his choice of screens. He's going to choose door number two. That's good for three. Harbor Light responding with Gatlin Rauch. Rainmaker almost hitting the ceiling. Definitely dense twine, though. Back to Vanderbilt and Straub. Three defenders. Not going to stop them. Bucket and one. Then it gets easier. Nobody hanging on them. That's too easy. Another bucket for Straub. Harbor Light with the drive and dish, though. Joey Anderson. Whoa. Off the window and in, Swordsman win big, 62-39. Alba, where you know only great things are going to happen at a place called the Thunderdome. 
Late in the first, Wolverines Tyler McNeil following his own shot, grabbing the board, scoring the putback. Visitors up seven in the Thunderdome. Alba continuing that lead. Brandon Milbacher pulling up with a J. Alba down five after one. Three point game midway through the second. Garrett Farkas converts a nice assist. It's a five point Wolverine edge. Wildcats from there. Milbacher smooth baseline fadeaway. Later is Nathan Willett's three ball. Alba wins 56 52. Heading down 131, Johannesburg Lewiston looks to complete a season sweep of Mansalona. Midway through the fourth, Ironman up a Baker's dozen. Quick passing, Brandon Dingman taking it to the Oak for two of his 35 on the Knights. Joburg trying to shoot their way back. Logan Huff, that's good. Pulling the Redbirds within 12. Moments later, off the miss. Brandon Huff collecting the board, putting it back, cutting the lead to 10, but that's as close as they would get down the stretch. No look feed here from Griffin Borst to Trevor Straight Carper for the deuce. Joburg actually falling a dozen short of Mancelona, 57-45. We enter triple overtime in Husky Country, where earlier this year only five points separated Benzie Central from Sutton's Bay. Benzie Central student section trying to get the team ready for tonight's contest. Husky Zane Brooks finds fellow senior Aaron Whaley. One two step is good for the bucket, then Devin Capron taking matters into his own hands, going right to the rim. Sutton's Bay up 24 19. Home team going coast to coast though in the third quarter. Kyle Smith connecting with Austin Purchase. We're just made there behind the arc though. Lars Thornton dropping the three. We have not had a score dropped in though. If you know it, 1-800-782-7910, 1-800-STAR-910, please call. Ferris State and Minnesota State Hockey have a little bad blood though. They met up again tonight in Mankato. We'll let you know how the Bulldogs fared against third ranked team in the nation in quadruple overtime.